Happy Monday, everyone. I'm Martha with Nature Niche. And for this week, I have a belated Christmas present for you. I've been meaning to do this for about three years. I have over 130 Monday with Martha posts. So I thought I would try to organize them um, into a matrix. So my gift to you this week is the Mondays with Martha matrix where um, on our website, we're gonna have um, an accessible Excel file that organizes all of the Monday posts into different categories. And I'll take you through those in a minute. Um, but hopefully that helps you find what you're interested in, um, what you have questions about, and it'll have direct links. It'll take you right to the um, YouTube video uh, for that particular um, Monday. But I hope you find that helpful. I figured if I was gonna do this project, I, I better do it while I was um, under 200 and I could still wrap my arms around the project. But we'll keep that spreadsheet updated. Um, and I hope that, um, that that helps. Environmental education, I think, is a really important thing that we do at Nature Niche. And um, I hope you enjoy uh, the different topics. Thanks. So when you go to our website um, under Mondays with Martha, um, there'll be an option to click on the matrix. And you can see that red link down there has um, the place where you can download the active spreadsheet. And here's what that matrix looks like. It has episode number and title. You can click on the title to go directly to the post video. Um, which are all hosted on our YouTube channel. And I've classified them into 13 categories. The first category is uh, wild bird information. And that's honestly probably one of the largest. And I have some um, very basic things for the folks who maybe started watching fairly recently. Um, it might be helpful to double back if you're new to um, wild bird feeding, uh, want to know more about those kinds of topics. I have a um, wild bird seed basics, a feeder basics, as well as how to feed or not feed your squirrels, um, what you need to know about using bird baths, how to attract certain species like Orioles and hummingbirds, and when to take those feeders down in the fall. Uh, things about different avian diseases, um, how to keep your bird baths and feeders clean to help um, minimize that. And then things like what not to feed the birds, uh, what to do if a bird hits your window, um, how water attracts wildlife in winter, um, and things like uh, the avian influenza topic. The second category covers um, feeders, habitat structures, and maintenance of those wildlife habitat structures. And there are posts about, you know, how do you monitor uh, nest boxes, some specifics about um, sighting and monitoring, and when to put up barred owl and eastern screech owl nest boxes. We have a demonstration of, you know, how we installed one on our own property. Um, what do you need to know about sighting and putting up bluebird houses? and things like wildlife brush piles. The third category is generally wildlife species summaries. So I like to talk about the specifics, the life history, the ecology of different wildlife species. So this is everything from um, birds to uh, butterflies and other insects uh, and reptiles and amphibians as examples. So. Monarch butterfly is a very popular topic. We get lots of questions. We talk about snowy owls, fun songbirds like evening grosbeaks, and amphibians like wood frogs. So lots of fun wildlife species info there. And then of course, there has to be a category um, about plant species. I am a botanist and a plant ecologist by training. And so here's where I have things, both um, native and non-native species in this category, but there are posts about things like tamarack trees and uh, the ephemeral yellow trout lily and the native shrub New Jersey tea. So lots of great plant information in this section. 
including um, where does the plant species grow, what kind of habitat does it prefer, and um, horticultural conditions, uh, what sort of faunal species does it support, uh, pollinator species, um, how do you identify it, and uh, what are some great uh, native landscaping uses for that particular species. The fifth category is one near and dear to my heart, a rare species. So this could be uh, flora or fauna, but, but things that are either listed um, at the state or federal level or being considered for that. So things like Blanding's turtles, wood turtles. We talk lots about monarch butterflies, Carner blue butterfly, and um, even rare plants like beak grass. The sixth category covers invasive species and pathogens. I talk about oak wilt. Um, how do you prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species? Things like Phragmites and spongy moth, garlic mustard, and autumn olive. I cover how you identify these species, um, how they disrupt or cause harm to our ecosystems, and how you can uh, control them in your own landscapes. The seventh category covers native plants and native plant landscaping, and it has lots of uh, species-specific info, but other helpful things like just basically what are native plants and why should we use them, um, a new look at lawns and how can we replace them with more native plantings, um, some fun facts about fall leaf color, how to select uh, native plant species for your own landscape, some strategies around that. Uh, for native planting, what are some great late season installation tips and care uh, to be doing in late summer and early fall? How do you identify things by their winter buds? And um, just how do you start planning to do a native planting? The next category includes landscape ecosystems and uh, processes. So this is a bigger picture view of um, different types of habitats like vernal pools, um, pit and mound topography. This is definitely a category where I want to add additional posts and help you get familiar with uh, the diverse types of landscape ecosystems we have. Another really important category that I'm um, proud to share with you are different stewardship project examples and actions uh, that others are taking to inspire you and that you can take to be um, a better steward of the environment we all share. Our business motto is no understand steward and so this gets at that third part. If you, you know, know something exists, you understand why it's important, um, then hopefully you care enough to take action um, to help uh, steward that, whether it's an ecosystem, a species, you know, something broader like water quality. Um, there are lots of things we can do to be better stewards of our environment. So I've done posts on things like how do you take a dead tree and make a snag habitat out of it? Uh, frost seeding and um, turf alternative seeding uh, behind my own store. Uh, what do you need to know about using rain barrels? And um, how do you uh, get to be a better recycler? Um, how do you reduce light pollution and its impact on migratory birds? How do you help turtles? Um, backyard wildlife habitat improvements. Um, and some simple ways, simple life things you can do to live more bird friendly. There's a category for citizen science uh, programs and reporting, uh, things like monarch migration and tagging, uh, participating in Journey North, uh, watching the birds and participating in Project Feeder Watch, the Great Backyard Bird Count, the Christmas Bird Count, um, Vernal Pool Patrol, and the Mackinac Straits Raptor Watch are examples. The pollinator support category is another big diverse one. Uh, we've talked about National Pollinator Week. Um, what are some good native plants uh, to help support pollinators? Um, lots of information about monarch, 
uh, rearing and development, um, the important relationship between insects, native insects and their native host plants, um, fall blooming wildflowers to support pollinators. And then we take a deep dive on some species that we reared in store, like the story about the giant leopard moth or giant woolly bear caterpillars, and uh, three main milkweed species for supporting monarchs, as well as explaining why goldenrods are great for pollinator support. The 12th category covers outdoor recreation opportunities and places to get outside and connect with nature and, and some of the health benefits to humans associated with being outside. Uh, examples include Michigan Trails Week, uh, Chippewa Nature Center's butterfly count here in Midland, Michigan, uh, the new Eagle Ridge Nature Area in Midland, and other beautiful places to visit like Taquamanon Falls State Park. And the last category covers sort of the cultural aspect um, of connecting with nature. So nature, art, and literature. I like to share inspiring um, nature poetry for the new year. I gave some examples of how you can celebrate the winter solstice, past cultural traditions, and fun arts and craft projects for that. So I hope um, that helps you understand kind of the, the breadth and the depth of the Monday with Martha posts, and I hope that helps you find what you need. And I would be open to um, future topic suggestions, things you want to know more about, projects you have to share. Just uh, contact us and let us know. Thanks and have a good week.